There are two types of prisoners in the life of this world. One form being a lot more cruel than the other. You have the physical prisoner, the one who has been detained by shackles and chains, who is within a physical confinement. This is one type of imprisonment. Then you have a second type of imprisonment that is far more harsh and far more grueling. And that is when a person's heart is imprisoned by impulse and desire. Why do I say that it is far more harsh? Because a person, if his body is confined and shackled behind bars, can still be productive. The same, however, cannot be said about a person who finds his heart, her heart, imprisoned by desire, by lust, and by passion. This is the true detainee. And that is why Imam ibn Taymiyyah, a man who experienced the prison life misery and died in her prison as well, he would say, the true prisoner, he said, is the one who has been imprisoned from the remembrance of Allah. And the true detainee is the one who has been detained by desire. And when you speak to this individual and you ask them, how is it that your diet has changed? Why are you so absent-minded? Why is it that we look at you but you're not quite there? Why have your sleeping patterns been disrupted? Why are you always so erratic and so irritable? The answer is always, I think I'm in love. But is this the outcome of what love should bring to a person? Love is supposed to bring you happiness and joy. It's supposed to encourage you, push you forward in life. It's supposed to help regulate your sleep and improve your diet. It's supposed to make you proactive and hopeful. It is something that brings about a brimming smile on your face and in your heart. That's love. But if it's doing the opposite, if it's causing you sleeplessness, agitation, absent-mindedness, wherever you look, you see the object of your desire. You can't focus, study, sleep, eat, drink. You can't do worship. You can't do anything. Then this this is not mahabbala. This is nearer to the concept of hawa, which we can translate as lust. And lust in our scripture generally has negative connotations. The word hawa in Arabic has two usages. The first, al khulu emptiness. And the second usage is as suqutu to plunge, to fall. So why has this word been given to the concept of lust? Because hawa by its nature is empty from all good. It is devoid of all good. And it causes a person to plunge, to fall into everything that is inappropriate. And when you ask this brother, this sister, after you offer them some advice or some harsh criticism about their behavior, about their relationships, about their social media browsing, you give them advice, they say, Ya Akhi, I just want to be happy. That's why I'm in this relationship. I just want to be happy. I'm looking for happiness. But take it as a rule of thumb, a rule in life. The happiness that you are searching for will never be found in those places that Allah has prohibited. And if you don't understand this, my dear brother, my dear sister, trust me, you will miss the mark of happiness every single time. And that is why Imam ibn al-Qayyim, he says that any individual who becomes attached to something other than Allah Jalla Jalaluhu will suffer at the hands of that thing three times. The first time you will suffer at its hand is during the chase as you try to pursue it. The second time you suffer is after you've pursued it. It's now yours. You now fear that it will leave you. And the third time we suffer at its hands and after it leaves us. Is there any joy in that? Imam ibn al-Qayyim speaks about a man who was standing outside of his home when a very attractive woman passed by. And she was saying, Aina tariqu ila hammami min jab? Where's the directions to Hammam Minjab? Hammam meaning a spa, a local spa in the area. And Minjab is its name. So the man, he was now besotted and he pointed to the door of his house and he said, I think it's here. So she goes inside, she takes the bait, she didn't know. He follows her and he closes the door and she realizes that she's in a very unfortunate circumstance. He begins to seduce her. So now she needs to get out of this difficult situation. So she thinks of a plan. She says, let's make this night worthwhile. Bring us something to eat, bring us something to drink first. He said, of course, I'm gonna bring you everything everything you want. And he rushes out of the house and he forgets to lock the door. And he comes back with his shopping. And guess what? He made a run for it. Good for her. Now he lost his bearings. I mean literally. He lost his mind. And he came out of the house screaming, saying the couplets of poetry, Ya Rubba qailatin yawman wa qad ta'ibat ayna tariqu ila hammami min jabi. Where is that tired woman who once said to me, where is the direction to hammamu min jabi? Where is she? Where is she? He lost it. Completely he went insane repeating these words over and over again, roaming the streets hopelessly. And he lived on for many years until now he was reclining on his deathbed, the throes of death pulling out his soul. And shortly before he died, his friends, they gathered around him and they said to him, Say la ilaha illallah. And he said, Ya Rubba qailatin yawman wa qad ta'ibat ayna tariqu ila hammami min jabi. Where is that tired woman who once said to me, where is the way to hammam min jabi? He repeated that till he died. 
Is that a heavenly pursuit or more of a nightmare that we should avoid? Brothers and sisters, I ask you gently, which of the two is happier? You tell me from a logic perspective, not even a scriptural perspective. Who is happier? Is it couple A who pursue a relationship outside of wedlock, outside of marriage, under the guise of night? Apparently no one can see them. To spend a short-lived moment of pleasure in the haram, in the prohibited. To be consumed by guilt and pain thereafter because they know Allah Almighty he said, Wala taqrabu zina. Don't go near fornication. Innahu kana fahisha. It is an abomination. Washa asabila. And a very evil path to follow. And they know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had seen the fornicators in their graves before the day of judgment burning within furnaces of fire. That type of guilt consumes them. And should someone knock on their door when they're in the middle of the act, they pounce in fear because they know Allah does not approve. Family does not approve. Community does not approve. Guilt is consumed consuming them. Then should she become pregnant, the pain and regret is compounded. And then should they choose to abort that child, the pain is compounded. Is this happiness? Or is it individual B who patiently waits for the arrival of that righteous spouse to come to them through dua and dhikr and good companionship and friends and community. They wait using salah as their weapon and dua and hijab and lowering of the gaze and the fear of Allah and masjid and halaqa and Quran, Allahu Akbar and the prayer of the night. For them to get married in the halal, in an open ceremony where everyone is invited and everyone is smiling and exchanging dua and giving gifts. And then should they spend an evening with one another that night, they are at peace because they know there is charity in carrying out your sexual relations when it is in marriage. And should someone knock on their door when they are in the middle of that act, they are unfazed. Why should they be phased? We open the door, we don't open the door because Allah approves of us and our community approves of us. Family approve of us. Who are we to fear? La ilaha illallah. And then should she become pregnant because of that union? The happiness is compounded. And should she deliver the child? There is a aqiqa, a feast, gifts, happiness, a meal, dua, an extension to your heritage, a righteous boy or girl. The happiness is compounded. Who is happier? They've sold us a lie when they told us that happiness can be found in the prohibited. La ilaha illallah. La yastawi al-khabith wa tayyib. Allah said, walau a'jabaka kathratul khabith. The filthy and the pure. They are not equal, even though you may be impressed by the quantity of the evil. Fattakullah. So be conscious of Allah. Ya uli al-albab, O people of intellect, la'allakum tuflihun, so that you may be successful. Refuse the fate of falling prey to every temptation that comes your way, my brother, my sister. Don't be that person. Don't condemn yourself to failure every time a test presents itself to you. Whether it's an image you see, a video that you cross paths with, a DM that appears in your messages, or a smile that you see on the canteen. Don't condemn yourself to failure. Every time a fitna presents itself to you, you are above that and you are more than that. And I share with you two case studies, a man and a woman who did this so well, mashallah. As for the case study of the man, he is the Prophet of Allah Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, who found himself in a room with a very ill-intentioned woman. And she closes the door and she invites him to herself. Allah said, وَرَاوَدَتْهُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ The woman in whose house he was in, she seduced him. وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ And she fastened shut the doors. وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكْ And she said to him, come to me. Have you thought about the sheer number of factors that would have made the sin possible if Yusuf wanted it to be? Count with me. Yusuf was a handsome man, one of the most beautiful of Allah's creation. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was single. He wasn't married, so he had no other way to channel his desire. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was a traveler. He was a visitor to Egypt, not a resident. And people shame when they are residents. It's more than when they are travelers. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was a slave. He wasn't a free man, so he could have argued a case to respond to the call of his master. And then the woman, number five, she was a beautiful woman. Number six, a high-ranking woman who could have covered up the crime. Number seven, she closed the doors herself. She fastened them shut. Nobody was going to see what was about to happen. Number eight, she was the one who was making the advance. He had no fear of rejection. Number nine, she threatens him with prison if he does not respond. Is this your average fitna? Is this your average text message from your ex who says to you, honey, I miss you, it would be nice for us to link up? No, this is on a different level. And despite all of these things combined, he said, Allah, Allah forbid. Innahu Rabbi ahsana mathwai. My Lord has been so kind to me. Innahu la Allah never gives success to the wrongdoers. La ilaha illallah. 
And as for the case study of the woman I promised to share with you, Al Bayhaqi narrates in his Shu'ab al Iman that there was an Arab Bedouin woman who found herself in the unfortunate circumstance of being alone with another Arab Bedouin man. So he began to seduce her. She said to him, because she is righteous, Woe to you! Where is your religion, man? Where is your honor and your chivalry? How dare you? She said to him. That is the response of a chaste woman. And then he says to her, flirtingly, Wallahi la yarana illa al kawakib. Why are you panicking? No one can see us but the planets. And then she delivered the thunderbolt of a message. She said to him, you say to me, nobody can see us but the planets. What about the Lord Allah who placed those planets there? What do these examples have in common? Both Yusuf السلام, and this woman, they saw Allah Almighty before their very eyes, figuratively speaking, and they imagined the standing before their Lord on the day of judgment, and so they withdrew, they refrained. And Allah praises these individuals, and He says about them, man khafa maqam rabbihi. As for the one who fears the standing before his Lord, hawa, and restrains his soul from the impermissible desire, the hawa. Did you hear it? Good news, paradise will be the home. Who is this person? Our scholars have described him and her. Ibrahim al Nakhai and Mujahid and others have said it's in reference to a person who was on the verge of disobeying Allah and then remembers his standing before his Lord. And so they walk away from that sin out of fear of Allah. Allah.